Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, I want to return to the wonderful world of Joseph Benner. So far, we have explored the impersonal life, wealth, and the way out. Three magnificent books. Perhaps his best book is The Way to the Kingdom. It's a longer book, and I will read it at some point. But there is a magnificent meditation in the book that I wanted to do first. And it has a a beautiful prayer. It appears that Benner was channeling. And there are several channels in this. So I've compiled this in a certain order so that it will be one complete meditation. And in the process, you will awaken your God self. And you will learn the truth that I alone am. These meditations are just wonderful. And I can't wait for you to try this. And I plan on doing these on a regular basis. A portion of this appears to be channeled descriptions on how to properly meditate. Then moving into the meditation with some wonderful prayers and a prayer for others that's wonderfully worded. And all of it together just makes for one incredible awakening meditation that I can't wait to share with you. Benner explains that daily meditation is the first and most important requisite of the aspirant. No real progress can be made without it. To help prepare and start you on the right kind of meditation, study carefully and use often this meditation that we're doing today. In it is condensed the essence of Jesus' teaching and there is nothing that will help you more to find the loving Christ and his kingdom within it than its illuminating words. This work has in it no place for laggards or for the mentally lazy. It is only for those who are imbued with an unquenchable determination and a fiery zeal to find the master and the kingdom. Many think they can contrive no regular time to meditate, but in bed after retiring or early in the morning are times always available if really sought and are often most satisfactory. There will be no danger of falling asleep when the mind learns to obey you. Again, while doing simple tasks around the home or in the office or factory, real meditation can be done and most profitably. It is really possible at such times, as you will find, to be in the world but not of it for you can go in thought wherever you will while your hands are busy at their regular work worrying about it simply put it up to the higher self stating that you earnestly desire the time and opportunity to do regular meditating and if he sees you really mean it and want it you will find it will be arranged for you in a most natural manner. If you leave it in his hands and trust it all to him, therefore rouse yourself to action. The kingdom is not for those who still crave for or are held by the allurements of the world, the flesh, or the devil. Self. The time has come when all such must be left behind. If you would lift your heart and mind to Christ, when you have found, earned him, then you will join with the other brothers and sisters of the kingdom in helping those who will be sent to you also to find him and the brotherhood and sisterhood of which you will then be a conscious integral part. 
while meditating an effort should always be made in the I am consciousness to command the forces of the mind, the emotions and the physical senses to be still and know that you, the God of you speaks and must be obeyed. Eventually, after persistent effort, you will realize that you are that consciousness and that these forces are listening to and obeying you. Then, in that consciousness, you can continue speaking as in the impersonal life and your mind will receive and accept what comes as from the God of you and you will know who you are. With many, meditation seems to be quite a problem. Some deem it a task and approach it with hesitancy and some reluctance because of strain in previous attempts or of not getting any apparent results. Others think they cannot find the time for regular meditation. It is not so difficult to find the time. Meditation can be made part of a well-ordered life as easily as can any other factor, system, and manifestation of the harmony and rhythm of the universe in the affairs of men will provide the time and the way if given the opportunity by your earnestly desiring it. True meditation is the simplest and most natural thing in the world because it is but a retiring into the quiet of the soul a letting go in the mind of all outer things and relapsing into a peace and a rest in which the spirit can come forth and speak to the mind. If you only know it many times a day, do you meditate? When your mind dwells upon things in which the personal self is interested. When that part of you is really concerned about a thing, your mind automatically obeys and dwells upon and ponders over that thing until its interest is appeased, worrying, being anxious, grieving, and such are all negative unconscious meditation. Thus, you can see that meditation is natural and in no way difficult. It only appears difficult because the human mind, which has been accustomed to having its own way and to thinking of only the personal things in which it is interested, rebels against restraint, particularly when required to think of impersonal and abstract things that you are interested in and wish light upon purposeful thinking is positive and conscious meditation. We will try to indicate more clearly what we mean. In the impersonal life, you are shown that it is really God who is living in your body and is your real self and that you are of no importance whatsoever either to yourself or to the world at large until you recognize this great truth in a more or less conscious and intelligent way. This of course is not easy to grasp by a mind that considers you and itself separate and apart from God. Now consider that the life that grew you and is living you is the same life that is growing the grass, the flowers, the trees, the animals and all humanity and is so wise and powerful a life that despite every obstacle it develops all to the maturity of that which it is their destiny to be. Did you or any one of these others have any conscious part in the direction of or actual processes of such growing. You know that you did not and you know that this life and intelligence and will doing it is all God who is all and all. Now try to realize that this life that is growing you, this mind that is intelligently directing all and this will whose power is accomplishing all is actually God and cannot be you or anyone else. Try to perceive the great truth of this by imagining how it must be. 
To do this, you must lift your mind away from this podcast and meditate upon what has been stated. And if you are greatly interested, you will find your attention fixed upon this life within you, imagining it as God living in your body, a very wise and loving consciousness filling and possessing it, moving it and causing it to do what he wants it to do. And it will gradually dawn upon you that the part of you that is considering all this is only your mind. And then in a wondrously illuminating way, it may flash into your consciousness that therefore you are not at all what you before thought was the you living in your body, but that it is much bigger and more wonderful you, that it is God, that God is the real you, and that the other you is but a part of his mind, a center of his consciousness that before had thought itself separate from him. If you have truly followed this and actually caused your mind to consider and do everything suggested, some illumination must have resulted, for the God of you would surely respond to a heart earnestly desiring to know him. The above would be real meditation and real inner work, as you will by this time have realized. All meditation is nothing more nor less than a pondering over or reflecting upon any subject to which you direct your mind's attention. The reason we urge the use of meditation is twofold, that you can cultivate the power and ability to require your mind to consider thoroughly any subject you wish it to understand fully, realizing that as you hold the subject firmly before your mind's eye, light will pour in enabling you to see it from many angles. Also that your mind may gradually learn who you are. Learn of your inner self and that it, the mind, is your child, your instrument that you are teaching, training, and disciplining so that it will serve you selflessly and efficiently until you have disciplined your mind. You cannot control your thoughts, and as by being able to control your thoughts, you can control your emotions. You can then bring your body into harmony, for its health is largely controlled by emotions or feelings harbored in the heart. When you become more or less master of your mind and dedicated to the service of the Christ, your God self, your real work begins. For all such earnest ones are accepted and put to that work, for they have been fitted and prepared. But not until the mind is thoroughly under control can real work be given. Real work awaits, but it will be mental work in the silence and at night, when the brain minds of those who seek and need help are still, so their souls can hear and accept. Such real work will be given when you are ready. There are probably some who are impatient at what they think to be the slowness of their progress and who wish to be put to work, evidently not recognizing that very definite work has already been given them to do. Such may not be the work they are looking for. It may seem to them too simple, even unnecessary, not yet glimpsing that the work they later will be called upon to do is mental work and of an extremely difficult kind to those who have not learned to concentrate and to control their thoughts, to shut them off at will and direct them upon any desired subject. All such must learn that to be of real service to the master within they must be able to hear his voice when he speaks, and that cannot be until they have learned to become quiet and to turn their thoughts within for the definite purpose of finding and getting acquainted with him. 
that is plain enough, is it not? We wish to help every earnest seeker to accomplish this, but before that is possible, mind control must be attained. This is only stating in another way what has been told several times already, and it will be repeated again and again until all realize the necessity of regular and systematic meditation for the twofold purpose of training and disciplining the mind until it becomes a perfect instrument for the master's use, and of learning to find and to know him. In doing this, you will soon realize that you are fulfilling the wishes of your higher self by his approval shown in the results attained and you will surely learn who is the master also you will learn thereby why this is not inconsistent with what was said above about no one being able actually to hasten the process of spiritual growth we have shown you one way to be your real self by first mentally seeing yourself acting as a divine being would act, and in meditation so practicing such mental acting that it becomes natural and easy when you mix with others. Those who will prove this will be startled by the attitude of others, the respect and even awe that sometimes unconsciously manifest toward you. Now we want to show you another way, or rather to give you other helps to aid you to arrive at the same place in consciousness, we want you to consider with us for a while what is the impersonal life and how to live it. For future meditations, you can mark it here, and I will leave a timestamp in the comments. Seat yourself in a chair in your own room if possible, or one in which you will be undisturbed. Take a positive position, sitting upright, but comfortably, so that you will be as unconscious of your body as possible. My children, I am come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Open now your hearts and receive me, for I am awaiting to come forth in each of you consciously, so that you may not only know me, but that you may know I am your self, your one and only self. The time is come that all may know me, if they will receive me. Oh, my children, look for me, not in some far off time or place, but realize that I am here now, here in your hearts. I am that love that is pushing forth to enrich and bless you, to supply you with all good and useful things needed for my harmonious and perfect expression through you. Open wide your hearts and acknowledge me there. Look to me there constantly. Ever keep your ears turned to me there listening for my voice, waiting thus upon me and me only, as you go about your tasks, or when quiet comes and you would know my will, for I promise I will not let any unfed, unhelped, unsatisfied whose hearts are fixed on me, for even as you receive all of your life health and strength from my life in you, so can you receive the fullness of my life, not only as perfect health and strength, but as perfect care, perfect supply, 
perfect expression of my perfect nature. When you yield your mind and self over wholly to me, I bless you, my dear ones. My love ever surrounds you and will always go before you, lighting your way and making easy your tasks. If you will but trust me and let me lead and guide you in all your ways. Now, close your eyes and try to visualize the room as a mental room or one within your mind in which you are going to fill full of and confine the mental qualities of discrimination, strength, the power to concentrate and truth for your future and continuous use. Try to realize that you are actually a center of God's consciousness, for in his consciousness we all live, move, and have our being, and that this mind which you call your mind is a center or focal point of his mind, just as the consciousness of each cell of your body is a center or focal point of your mind and that therefore deep within your mind there must be always present and ever available God's love, intelligence and power. In fact, all that God is in his consciousness. Now try to see this consciousness, the holy love or Spirit of God pouring forth from deep within and flowing through and radiating from you to all other centers of his consciousness as a brilliant white light. Which light in truth is the spiritual self to one who has the inner sight. For it is the light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Therefore realize that you are that light. And that your mind, being a part of God's mind, you can consciously and actually call forth from within that mind. If motivated and accompanied only by unselfish love, any needed quality for in it of course exist all God qualities. Therefore, see your light ever shining and going thus before you lighting fully your path and making everything so clear that no possible shadow can intrude to deceive or hinder your perfect spiritual sight and hence your fullest understanding. This gives true discrimination, likewise to your right, see this light radiating and pouring forth from you into the mental atmosphere of that part of your room as the strength of divine mind ever ready to support and sustain you in any need and to enable you to do anything you wish to do.
while on your left see the greatest light of truth, likewise flowing forth to fill that part of your mentality, so that whenever you need to know anything, no matter what, it is ever ready to flood your consciousness and make all clear to you. back of you see this great white light from within pouring forth and filling that part of your mentality with the power to concentrate and focus it whenever you want to direct your mind upon any given idea or to any desired end just see this light as a mighty power ever back of you waiting to pour through your consciousness as through a funnel in which is held the idea you wish clearly to understand or the picture that you wish to out manifest whenever you call upon this power to direct the light of divine mind upon it See your intellect or visioning faculty located in the front of your mind, back of center of forehead, serving as a lens to focus the light and reflect the perfect picture in the outer realms of consciousness or of physical manifestation. Just as the light pours through the small lens of a magic lantern when you turn on the electric power and throws the picture on the plate upon the screen. So will this power, when you thus consciously direct it with intense purpose, cause the light, life, and substance of divine mind to pour into and through the idea or picture you are holding in your mind and will out-manifest it either as a perfect knowing or as the fulfillment of your desire. Study this last carefully and prove it, for it can be used to acquire any needed wisdom, power, or ability, or to create and make manifest any righteous thing or condition. But be very sure 
you have the approval of your higher self of that which you wish manifested for it should never be attempted unless inspired by a loving desire to help someone or to fit yourself for the father's use this rounds out your mentality filling it full of those qualities that you want ever available for use any other qualities can be similarly brought forth and made available the practice of actually calling forth these qualities from within you and seeing them surrounding you and filling your mental room thereby creates an aura that will always surround and protect you or it will be of such high vibration because of the brilliancy of its light and the power of love radiating from it that none of the forces of darkness can penetrate or even approach the powers of discrimination and truth thus built into your aura will instantly detect any inimical or inharmonious vibrations and enable you to know how to deal with them this practice also will gradually if you do it faithfully day after day make you conscious of the mighty power you are and of the wonderful instrument you have in this mind of yours as you learn to make it obey your slightest command these exercises are for development of mental power within yourself they are that you may not only develop power but that you may become power may learn to know who you are and of what you are a part but always remember that power and knowledge avail nothing unless love inspires and directs their use dear friend do you truly want to come speedily and eternally into your own that which you came here into manifestation to express then meditate earnestly and persistently day after day on the following phrase day after day focus on the first part until you realize its truth in the one mind there is the consciousness only of wholeness completion and perfection in it there are no ideas of lack or limitation of supply of any kind to every center of that mind and every human mind is such a center there flows naturally every needed idea even as air rushes into a vacuum or as blood carries to every cell of the body everything needed for their growth and sustenance remember that one mind is in you is your mind as there is only one mind also remember by your realization of this great truth and making it the dominant fact in your consciousness are you and your father truly one for it unites your consciousness with his consciousness he who is your real self and whose mind is the only mind of course it does for you are then in his consciousness and therefore you are all that he is and all that he has is yours once believe this once know it and you will be free from all lack and limitation forever
in the one mind. There is the consciousness only of wholeness, completion, and perfection. In it there are no ideas of lack or limitation, of supply of any kind. To every center of that mind and every human mind is such a center. There flows naturally every needed idea. Even as air rushes into a vacuum, or as blood carries to every cell of the body everything needed for their growth and sustenance. Remember that one mind is in you, is your mind, as there is only one mind. Also remember by your realization of this great truth in making it the dominant fact in your consciousness. Are you and your father truly one? For it unites your consciousness with his consciousness. He who is your real self and whose mind is the only mind, of course it does for you, are then in his consciousness and therefore you are all that he is and all that he has is yours. Once believe this, once know it and you will be free from all lack and limitation forever. in the one mind. There is the consciousness only of wholeness, completion, and perfection. In it there are no ideas of lack or limitation, of supply of any kind. To every center of that mind and every human mind is such a center. There flows naturally every needed idea. Even as air rushes into a vacuum, or as blood carries to every cell of the body everything needed for their growth and sustenance. Remember that one mind is in you, is your mind, as there is only one mind. Also remember by your realization of this great truth in making it the dominant fact in your consciousness. Are you and your father truly one, for it unites your consciousness with his consciousness. He who is your real self and whose mind is the only mind, of course it does for you, are then in his consciousness and therefore you are all that he is and all that he has is yours. Once believe this, once know it, and you will be free from all lack and limitation forever.
in the one mind. There is the consciousness only of wholeness, completion, and perfection. In it there are no ideas of lack or limitation, of supply of any kind. To every center of that mind, and every human mind is such a center, there flows naturally every needed idea. Even as air rushes into a vacuum, or as blood carries to every cell of the body everything needed for their growth and sustenance, remember that one mind is in you, is your mind, as there is only one mind. Also remember by your realization of this great truth and making it the dominant fact in your consciousness, are you and your father truly one, for it unites your consciousness with his consciousness, he who is your real self and whose mind is the only mind of course it does for you, are then in his consciousness, and therefore you are all that he is, and all that he has is yours. Once believe this, once know it, and you will be free from all lack and limitation forever. Now that you have realized intensely the truth of what we have just said, by thus meditating and letting it soak into your subconscious, let the following flood your consciousness as well for the next 10 minutes. Be still, my child. And know I am your life, your health, your strength, your understanding, your supply, your power, your love. I am all these things, all these ideals you are seeking to be and to have. Oh, my child, can you not see? You can have none of these apart from me, can get none without getting me, can get them nowhere else but from me, your real, your only self, who am all these things now, and therefore you also are these things now and forevermore. See this, beloved and know the truth of yourself. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy, laden, and I will give you rest. Can you not realize that this life in you, any portion of health or strength or power or love or understanding that you have is not of yourself, but is of me? Whim all these things in you, then why not have done with your foolish, anxious striving to be that which you are now, always were, and always will be, in supreme fullness and perfection? Why not then let go completely and let me, your real and perfect self, have sway in your consciousness, letting no thoughts therein? you know are not my thoughts. That is all you need to do. I will do the rest. Beloved, if you abide thus in me, 
and let this my word abide in you. Everything your heart seeketh will surely come to pass in blessed richness and abundance. Be still, my child, and know I am your life, your health, your strength, your understanding, your supply, your power, your love. I am all these things, all these ideals you are seeking to be and to have. Oh, my child, can you not see you can have none of these apart from me? Can get none without getting me? Can get them nowhere else but from me? Your real, your only self, who am all these things now, and therefore you also are these things now and forevermore. See this beloved, and know the truth of yourself. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy, laden, and I will give you rest. Can you not realize that this life in you, any portion of health or strength or power or love or understanding that you have is not of yourself? but is of me, who am all these things in you, and why not have done with your foolish, anxious striving to be that which you are now, always were, and always will be, in supreme fullness and perfection? Why not then let go completely, and let me, your real and perfect self, have sway in your consciousness? letting no thoughts therein, you know are not my thoughts. That is all you need to do. I will do the rest. Beloved, if you abide thus in me, and let this my word abide in you, everything your heart seeketh will surely come to pass in blessed richness and abundance. Be still, my child, and know I am your life, your health, your strength, your understanding, your supply, your power, your love. I am all these things, all these ideals you are seeking to be and to have. Oh, my child, can you not see you can have none of these apart from me? Can get none without getting me? Can get them nowhere else but from me? Your real, your only self, who am all these things now, and therefore you also are these things now and forevermore. See this beloved, and know the truth of yourself. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy, laden, and I will give you rest. Can you not realize that this life in you, any portion of health or strength or power or love or understanding that you have is not of yourself? but is of me, who am all these things in you, and why not have done with your foolish, anxious striving to be that which you are now, always were, and always will be, in supreme fullness and perfection? Why not then let go completely, and let me, your real and perfect self, have sway in your consciousness? letting no thoughts therein, 
you know are not my thoughts. That is all you need to do. I will do the rest. Beloved, if you abide thus in me, and let this my word abide in you, everything your heart seeketh will surely come to pass in blessed richness and abundance. Be still, my child, and know I am your life, your health, your strength, your understanding, your supply, your power, your love. I am all these things, all these ideals you are seeking to be and to have. Oh, my child, can you not see you can have none of these apart from me? Can get none without getting me? Can get them nowhere else but from me? Your real, your only self, who am all these things now, and therefore you also are these things now and forevermore. See this beloved, and know the truth of yourself. Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy, laden, and I will give you rest. Can you not realize that this life in you, any portion of health or strength or power or love or understanding that you have is not of yourself? but is of me, who am all these things in you, and why not have done with your foolish, anxious striving to be that which you are now, always were, and always will be, in supreme fullness and perfection? Why not then let go completely, and let me, your real and perfect self, have sway in your consciousness? letting no thoughts therein, you know are not my thoughts. That is all you need to do. I will do the rest. Beloved, if you abide thus in me, and let this my word abide in you, everything your heart seeketh will surely come to pass in blessed richness and abundance. And now let us pray. Beloved Father, Thou, O blessed Christ Jesus, and Thou, O our dear brothers and sisters of the kingdom, hear this, our earnest prayer. Draw us in consciousness deep within where Thou art, where self exists not, and where we may be one with and abide with Thee, in Christ. Help us to open wide our hearts and let out the great love that it may possess us utterly. May rule, motivate, and inspire our every thought, word, and act, merging us completely into love, thereby enabling us to love as thou lovest, to see as thou seest, to hear as thou hearest, lifting the consciousness of our human minds into complete oneness with our Christ consciousness, thy consciousness, so that henceforth we can consciously at will be with thee, work with thee, commune with thee face to face at all times and on all planes, when the need is in the Father's service, and may know with thy understanding all things we seek and need to know, cleanse us of all consciousness of self and of separation from thee, so that our Lord Christ henceforth may live his life in us, 
do his will in us, be his self in us, without let or hindrance of any kind forevermore. Beloved Father, make us to abide always in thy consciousness and thy word to abide in us, giving us ever of thy wisdom to light and direct our way, thy will to strengthen and sustain us, and thy love to surround, protect, and fill us, so that we may see thee, dear Christ, may feel thee, may know thee, may be truly one with thee, everywhere, in everything, and in every one of our brothers. We thank and glorify thee, beloved Father, for thy many blessings. Take us wholly unto thyself, so that we may be selfless and perfect instruments for thy use. In Christ Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. For the soul quickening of those who need help. Repeat their name now. Dear one, in your true being, you are one with the Father and with the Son and in the oneness of consciousness of the Holy Spirit, your eternal abode, you walk and commune with and know with them, know that you are spirit, holy, harmonious, pure, powerful, and perfect, that all that the Father hath is yours, and that for you an abundance of riches is waiting to outmanifest, or for healing, that all that the Father is you are, and that perfect health, strength, and happiness is yours to express. Then let there be perfect peace and understanding and truest love and trust between you and them at all times and on all planes, that you may positively and continually manifest and be, may know and see, may think and speak and do that only which the Father wills for you. Repeat their name again. You are not bound by any claims of the flesh, or of the world, or of mammon, or of the separate selfish mind. For these have no existence in spirit. Then let the perfection of your true self and all of your divine powers and understanding, all of your soul riches, or of your true health or happiness, which you would proclaim for such, and your own good which the Father hath waiting for you, come forth now and fully manifest that the Father may be glorified in the Son that you are. Say this slowly and powerfully, trying to put all the meaning and love into the words that you can. Then try to realize that these words go forth as would a beam of powerful light into the darkness, straight to the soul consciousness of the one addressed, that the soul will surely receive them, will be awakened by them, and will be reminded by them of its divine nature and heritage. Then know that as soon as the brain mind gets quiet, the truth will push through from the soul into the brain consciousness as an illumined thought from the higher self and the one addressed will awaken from his dream of lack, disease, or limitation of whatsoever nature, and will know the truth when all such false claims will dissolve in his consciousness to nothingness, and their outer manifestation will disappear. After fully realizing this, seeing from the heart, we thank thee, beloved Father, and praise thy holy word, which is spirit, which is truth, which is life, which is power to accomplish that whereunto it is sent, for we send them in the name of Christ Jesus our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Now.
let us go into the silence and ponder this wonderful meditation. you're ready, you can come back to yourself and go forth knowing that you are God, that you've accessed the inner voice of your higher self. Joseph Benner would recommend an hour a day of contemplating the presence of God. And we have done pretty close to that. Some wonderful meditations and some great affirmations. I hope this helps to awaken you and become aware of your true power. It's such a simple thing, but as I contemplate the presence of this God force within me. This God force appears to gain in power. And so I only hope that you find this same phenomenon because it is wonderful. Be still and know that you are God.
welcome to the Reality Revolution. <laughs>